All right, let's look at a few specific use cases. We're going to be doing a couple of flames, uh, like this candle flame. So these are small scale fluids, uh, a bit of a bigger candle flame with the still having the blue tint. Uh, we have this, which is kind of your uh, your flame on the on the fire stove. Uh, it's dancing a bit weirdly here, but you know how you get that blue flame in the middle. Uh, and then the last one was this leading edge, blue leading edge flame. Let's go, let's uh, check this example first. So it's right here. And the trick here is to use your fuel as a mask. So you can see there was actually, there is, there are values here, but if you want to, you need to negate those values inside to get that uh, invisible flamey look that you uh, usually get on candles. Now, I just want to give a shout out to Attila. I, I downloaded these hip files and saw how he was doing it with pyro and I then adapted it to uh, Axiom. So all of this is from Attila, like the basic emitter setup. Essentially, we have burn temperature and velocity. Quite simple. Uh, we're just doing some some noise on the temperature. So it's moving like that. And Axiom, like I said, will recognize burn as fuel. So once you solve this, you go to your combustion. Let's see. So the most important thing here is on the output, your mask, you set your mask field to temperature and then on the sparse, uh, you say density plus temperature because we are in fact not uh, simulating any density in this case. As you can see, we don't have density. So we need those fields in order to get the smokeless flame happening. Now we have some density here, but that is only because of the combustion. If I turn this off, we won't have any density, but we will still be caching temperature and fuel, which is what we need. But for now, I'll just keep this on. So you simulate this and you can see that's the same result I have cached here. Looking at our fuel data, looks like this. So this will actually act as a mask. So in your pyro bake volume, you go to binding, intensity volume, you set this to fuel, and your color volume, you set to temperature. Intensity is this guy. So this will act as a mask, you know, here. You can see we're masking it even more if we erode it in. If we put this to zero, uh, we get all of this at the top, which we don't want. So you just erode it and you just get the nice flame. And then this is using the temperature field. So the temperature is hotter at the top, which means that here, if you remove this, it's just going to be eroding inside like that. But if you add some blue tint, you can do whatever you want here. Green, some green, red, purple, you name it. So I think it was this blue and I put it to a much darker color. It's barely visible like that. And then I retimed it so it's flickering just a bit more and we get something like this. So you get that flickering motion. Oh, and that's right. So the flickering, that's what I was thinking about before. The flickering, I'm doing that by animating, animating this fuel. Oops, come on, go back. So I'm randomly on the time scale on my frame values. So these are the values. So it's going to go up and down, up and down, and that will help with the flickering motion that you see in, uh, in flame. Candle, candle, uh, fire, candle flame, candle flame. All right. 
Second example is going to be the basic candle flame. So you can see it's a bit more sporadic in the beginning and then it calms down and then it's almost completely calm. Also has the blue, the blue bottom. So for that, it's a bit different, this approach. We have our sphere scattering uh, points inside, density, temperature, temperature. We did this a bunch of times in the previous lessons. So I'm just, so th this is my temperature value. And in this one, I'm slowly animating. I'm merging all of them, uh, volume rasterizing, and then simulating. This simulation doesn't even have combustion. So we're just sourcing in our temperature and that's it. And we're outputting density and temperature. I believe, yeah, so the sub steps are set to three. With these small scale fluids, uh, I always set the sub steps higher. That's what, we, that's what uh, we get, looks like this. And then I take my sphere again. I do a VDB from polygons, name it temperature, VDB activate, convert VDB to volumes so I can use the volume blur. And you need to activate, otherwise your blur is going to be clamping like this. I do a volume mix and I subtract the temperature from this temperature. So let's visualize it. If you don't do it, you will get your main base emitter here as well. And we don't want that. We just want the, the tip like that. So here at the top, we have our stove fire. And at the bottom, we have another example that is kind of the leading, uh, I like this one better, the leading edge of that blue flame. These are just examples for you to test out on your own and make them better. Uh, these are more R&D examples and they're not the prettiest looking, but all the logic from them is can be applied to other projects and other effects that you're doing. So we have this here and we kind of want this blue fire happening just at the bottom. And that way we have control over it and where it's actually spawning. So it's not overriding the whole, the whole effect. What we have here is a sphere kind of just kisses that fuel. So this is the fuel and this is the sphere and it's on just for a few seconds. So it starts igniting everything like so. We are exporting density, temperature and fuel. And here to note, I am replacing fuel and replacing density in the beginning. So we get this. And then I'm splitting this. Uh, I have, I'm splitting this into the base temperature. Another temperature that goes through an expand. I convert it to basic Houdini volumes, blur it. That's why we convert it to Houdini volumes. So we can use the blur, convert it back to basic VDBs, rename it to color gradient. So this will drive our whole blue effect essentially. And then I have a multiplier here. On the middle, I'm creating, I'm taking that same temperature using a volume bob to erode it. It's literally just a fit for the temperature, doing the same blurring operations, and I'm renaming this to my fuel. We don't need the switch here actually. So this is now my fuel. And then there's a multiplier for this fuel here. And now here we have the actual fuel out of the simulation. So you can see if I keep only the fuel and visualize it, that's how the actual fuel looks like. And keep in mind, uh, we're not, we're not, um, sorry for not showing this before, but we're not advecting the fuel. Otherwise the fuel would be rising up. We do that so we get a mask that is only at the bottom here. Oops. Uh, same thing, blur it, convert it. And I'm renaming this to add fuel, create. 
at field bottom. And this is just our bottom mask. So let's take a look at how the masks, the masks are actually working. So we have this field bottom. I'll put this to 30. So you see it's quite exaggerated and I will transform it. I'll go here where we have less data. So it's a bit faster. So this becomes slower just because we're blurring and doing so many operations. Okay. So if I rise this up, you can see this is our mask now. This will serve as our mask for the bottom. Same thing if I remove this mask and I increase this one by quite a lot, it's going to be the same thing. This is also just our mask. And this, these are our, our actual values that we're using. Or, let me plug back in I don't know what the values were before <laughs> let's see okay so it looks good so what we're doing here is our color gradient that's coming from here color gradient plus a ramp so I'm plusing the same color grading but with a ramp just to give me some more control then I'm saying color gradient multiply equals fuel, which is this. This is our fuel. Plus the bottom at fuel bottom, which is the bottom here. So once we have all of this and we start either multiplying this down or multiplying it up, and we can also change the erosion here so you can see we are just essentially playing with the values and where the blue is occurring. So we are just creating a bunch of masks and then multiplying and adding them together to create the blue, uh, the blue flame. So if you wanted more flame to be happening here, you could increase this mask. So this will increase just that bottom. Obviously you, you start getting an edge so then you have to kind of blur it a bit more and play with that. This one is a bit tricky uh, just because it's a box. That's why, that's why this mask is a bit better because it still uh, kind of looks like the flame. So if I go here and if I don't blur it, you will see we're going to start getting those flamey shapes, which is some maybe something you also want. Um, maybe I'm blurring this too much. so. Let's go back. And now let's try to multiply this down. So maybe you would like something like that for your blue flamey fire, right? And then what I'm doing here is um, changing the, the range, nothing special. Also you control, oh, by the way, yeah, <laughs> the color gradient you input it as your color volume and then your temperature is the intensity so this is all temperature and this is our color volume and we can change the values here as well so you can see this is quite intense so what you can do is maybe dial it down put it back also this is going to change when you're rendering so just keep that in mind this is just a preview and then if you remove this completely let's see or maybe yeah it's tricky like these values get very finicky and then let's see if we increase the multiplier maybe that's too much but yeah we get some of that blue happening here Maybe push this back up a bit. So yeah, you can see there, uh, the values are very, you need to dial them down quite a lot, but once you have all the masks, it should be fine. So this example at the bottom, it's very similar, just a different type of effect. So it's going to be spreading from the middle, also leaving that edge. Same thing, the top setup is the same. 
then we have our density, our fuel, and our color gradient. And here, just the, the multiplications are a bit different. So we are plussing our color gradient on top. So whatever's happening in this ramp, we're saying color gradient plus the color grading based on this ramp multiplied by our fuel, which will serve as a mask. So this is our fuel. We disable this. You can see we have uh, no values here. So this serves as a multiplier on top multiplied by our fuel uh, multiply at the end. So you can make this much more extreme. And this will give you a nice, oops, there we go. It's a bit, gets a bit slow towards the end. So I hope I explained this properly. I know it might be a bit confusing with all the different uh, layers and masks that we're creating, uh, but yeah, I think you guys should get it. Uh, but if you don't join our discord and I will be happy to explain more or reiterate on these setups. All right, cool. Let's continue.